welcome back. In this series, we've begun exploring the concept of data structures, and we know that different data structures are suited for different situations. In this video, we explore some of those common situations. In later videos, we'll get into the nitty gritty of how data structures are used in these situations. This video is divided into two parts. In the first half, we'll introduce you to seven abstract data types. In the second half, you'll do three practice exercises to help process and remember what you learned. Let's get started. Good software is constructed by assembling a variety of building blocks together. Today we're going to look at seven fundamental building blocks for working with data. These building blocks are called abstract data types. Now I need to make a distinction. These are not data structures. These are abstract data types. Those are different but related terms. An abstract data type defines an idea of what you can do with data. A data structure defines how that data is stored and organized to actually make it work efficiently. As we will see in the next few videos, each abstract data type must be paired with a specific data structure under the hood. We'll find these abstract data types useful from two perspectives. First, they provide some context for our study of data structures. But more importantly, they are themselves extremely useful as building blocks for the applications you write. The abstract data types we'll be looking at in this video are list, set, map, queue, stack, tree, and graph. Let's get started. List. A list is a collection of values in a specific order. Values can be added, removed, and rearranged, and you can loop through them. You are all already familiar with lists. Your language either has a list data type built in, or in JavaScript, this type is called array. Set. In contrast to a list, a set is a collection of data that doesn't necessarily have an order, and it cannot contain duplicates. The idea of a set is that elements are either in or out. The set either contains that value or it does not. For example, a set could be useful for tracking what programs are installed on your computer. You cannot install a program more than once, and you don't really need to track the order you installed them. You just need to know whether a certain program is there or not. C Sharp, Java, and JavaScript all have a set data type built in. Map. In a map, each value is associated with a unique name or key. The values can be looked up and modified by that key. An example of this is the index in the back of a book. The key is the topic you want to look up, for example, birds, and the value associated with that key is the page number, in this case, page 14. The advantage of a map is that it is very efficient to look up values by their key. But on the other hand, it can be inefficient to access values in any other way. You might recognize the map data type by another name. It is also referred to as a dictionary, table, or associative array. If you're familiar with JavaScript, you might also recognize that JavaScript objects are this kind of structure, although JavaScript also has a specific built-in map type. Q. A queue is a special kind of ordered list that only supports two operations, adding to one end and removing from the other. We're all familiar with this concept in the line at a grocery store or a toll booth. Patrons enter one end of the line and are served one by one at the far end in the same order they arrive. A common term for this is FIFO, or FIFO, first in, first out. The first to arrive is the first to be served. An example in computing would be a printer queue. As jobs come in, they may queue up to wait for earlier jobs as the printer finishes each job in order one by one. Stack. Stacks are related to queues, but values are added and removed from only one end of the list. These add and remove operations are often called push and pop. This makes stack a LIFO structure, L-I-F-O last in, first out, because the last item you pushed will be the first out when you pop. One example 
is the undo feature in a text editor. Each time you make a change to the document, that change is added to the top of the stack. When you undo, that most recent change is removed. Stacks also have an interesting use for reversing things. If you push A, then B, then C, the items will pop in the order C, then B, then A. Tree. With a tree data type, values are connected to each other in a structure that branches out from a single starting point. The starting point is called the root. Each individual value is called a node, and the nodes at the end of the branches are called leaves. An example of a tree is the file system on your computer. On Windows, the branching starts at a lettered drive, such as the C drive. On Mac and Linux, the branching starts at the root folder, which is represented as a single forward slash. From there, each folder can have many other folders and files in it. Those folders can then have multiple other folders inside of them, and so on. Often, we use family tree terminology to talk about the tree structure. Each node can have child nodes, and it is referred to as the parent of those nodes. The analogy extends to grandchild, grandparent, descendant, and ancestor nodes. If you've worked with HTML documents, you may already have seen this terminology used because the nested elements in an HTML document are modeled by the computer using a tree data type. The final type we'll look at is graph. A graph is related to a tree because it has connected nodes, but while a tree must start with a single root node and branch out, the nodes of a graph can be connected in many ways. There is no limit to the connections. A great example of a graph is storing distances between cities. There are multiple ways to get from LA to New York, either directly or by way of Detroit. There are many variations on the graph data type. Sometimes, as in our example, the lines between nodes can also have data attached to them. Here, we're storing the distance between each city. Let's review with a few practice quizzes. This is just to help you remember better. We're not taking scores. First, I'll show you a slide for each, and you identify or say out loud which of the seven abstract data types it is. I'll show each slide for three seconds, but you can pause the video if you need more time. Here we go. Which abstract data type is this? A list where only one end is accessible. In a stack, values are pushed and popped from one end. A numbered collection of values in a specific order. A list is a numbered collection of values in a specific order. A list where items enter one end and exit the other. In a queue, values are added to one end and taken from the other. No duplicates, and often no specific order. With a set, values are simply in it or not. Nodes can be connected in many ways. Graphs allow data to be connected in many ways. Nodes are connected in a branching structure. A tree is a branching structure with parents and children. Values are stored with keys. A map stores values indexed by key. For the next practice quiz, I'll give you examples of situations and you identify which of the seven abstract data types would be best to use in that scenario. I'll show each prompt for five seconds, but you can pause the video if you need more time. Make sure you have picked one before the video moves on. Even if you make the wrong choice, the process will help you learn and remember. Which abstract data type best fits each situation? One, print jobs are sent to a printer. It handles them in the order they came in. Q is the best answer here. Store distances for routes between cities. This would be 
a graph, a topical index in a book, map, keep track of which programs are installed on a computer, use a set, the file directory structure on a computer. Tree. Steps in a recipe. The list data type. Undo history in a text editor. This is a great place to use a stack. For the final practice quiz, we'll do more scenarios, but this time, the scenarios are different. You'll have to use some critical thinking to come up with your best guess. Here we go. You are exploring a maze and want to keep track of recent turns so you can retrace your steps in reverse order. I would use a stack here. Every turn you make, push it to the stack. Then when you hit a dead end, retrace your steps by popping the most recent turns as you go. You have 200 patients, and you want to look them up by social security number when they check in. For quick lookups by key, such as social security number, you'll want to use a map. As you drive across the country, you want to keep track of which states you've seen license plates for. You don't care to keep track of how many times you've seen each, just whether you've seen it or not. This is a good situation for a set. Each state is either in the set or it's out of the set. That's all you need to know. Sets are optimized for this. You are building an application with a menu. Some of the menu items have submenus, and the submenus can have submenus. A tree would work well for this. Each menu item is a node in the tree. If it has a submenu, the items in that menu are its children. Store the top 20 hit songs in order. I would go with a list. A list is the best way to store items in a specific order and be able to access any of them and loop through them. Sometimes you get too many calls into your call center and people have to wait for their call to be answered. You need to keep track of who's holding and answer the calls in the order they came in. A queue would be the best solution for this. FIFO, first in, first out. Track your connections on a social media site. See who your friends are, who their friends are, and find your closest connection to Kevin Bacon. A graph is a common way of representing social connections. Each person is connected to multiple others, and there can be multiple ways to link from one person to another via different common connections. These seven are just a sampling of the many abstract data types out there. They are great building blocks to use in your programming projects. You can search online how to use each of these in your particular language. Many are already built in, or you might need to download a free library for others. In our next videos, we'll see how data structures are used under the hood to make these work.